The Cincinnati Bengals are one game away from the Super Bowl. Let's talk about how they can get there. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapine. Today, we preview the AFC Championship game, yeah, which is baby. something that people covering the Cincinnati Bengals haven't done for my entire life, essentially, since I was maybe six months old. And we get to do it today. Really exciting stuff. Going to talk about some keys to victory as Joe Burrow and the Bengals try to go toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes and those Kansas City Chiefs. We'll also hear in a new little feature at the end of the show what the Chiefs, Locked On Chiefs guys, think are the keys to victory for the Kansas City Chiefs against the Cincinnati Bengals. And we'll react to that toward the tail end of the show before we get James' prediction for that AFC Championship game. But let's get started, James. Go ahead. And it'll be Ryan Tracy, who we haven't heard from. We didn't do the crossover with Ryan Tracy, so it is a little bit different. It's not like we're using a clip from the crossover or anything like that. So certainly, uh, certainly worth staying on, uh, staying tuned for. Plus, my prediction. I'm excited for it. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, no, great point, Ryan Tracy, who I used to do Locked On NFL with before the season started. So an old friend of mine, of course, as somebody that I've worked with together on the Locked On Podcast Network. Looking forward to hearing from him a little bit later. But James, keys to victory is what we've done on Thursdays as we record on Thursday night for our Friday preview show Mm -hmm. just about every day for the last, what, five months, football seasons long. And this one, well, might be the second most important game of the Bengals season up to this point, certainly the most important game. And you talked about the keys of victory for locked on now. And we start with the obvious, I think. And we talked about it with Chris yesterday on the crossover Protection cannot be what it was against the Tennessee Titans. It can be what it was the last time against the Kansas City Chiefs. I think Joe Burrow was sacked four times in that game. It can be what it's been a lot this season when he's taken some hits, when he's had to make guys miss. It can't be free rushers off the edge in the B gap, free rushers up the middle in the A gaps, guys falling on their butts or on their faces before Joe Burrow finishes his drop back. It can't be that. We can't have that repeat itself. We can't have Joe Burrow holding onto the ball and taking the Bengals out of field goal range with 18 yard loss sacks against the Kansas city chiefs. If we get that again from the Cincinnati Bengals this week, they might be in trouble. So that's where it starts. Well, no, not might. Then it's over. And I'm not trying to be all negative and zero chance. That's not going to fly because this is, this is the Joe Burrow fly high game where you need him to, be super sane, you know, next level, take his next step with his legacy and have all the debate shows talking about how he's, you know, the next Tom Brady for real. And we just saw it on Sunday at Arrowhead. That's what you need him to do. And he can't do that if, if they play the way they did last week. Like some of that was on Burrow, of course. And I don't know if this Chiefs defense is capable uh, or, or Steve Spagnuolo is capable of doing what Mike Rabel did. But from a pressure standpoint, my eyes are on Frank Pollock. You know, all week long, I I was at practice on Thursday watching and and looking at the offensive line from a distance. And I just hope that they can get the communication stuff ironed out completely. It needs to be perfect. It really does. From a um, twist, stunt, all of that stuff, it needs to be done because they're going to get beat. Like we know they're going to get beat some. They got beat in the Chiefs game. Joe Burrow didn't even finish the Chiefs game. Could have taken those final snaps, but he didn't. It's not like he didn't get hit there. But last week was on another level. And 19 points won't get it done. 29 points probably won't get it done. And you're not going to get to 29 playing the way they did last week in the trenches. So you're right. It it starts there. They have to, have to, have to play much better um, in the trenches. And if they do that, I think Burrow, I don't think he's going to be lost and confused at any point, really, against this Chiefs defense. And, And if you keep him upright and he's not lost or confused, They should be productive on offense. So, yeah, that's key number one, number two, number three for me because it unlocks all these other things and has the ripple effect that it needs to have across the team and across the offense. 
Yeah, that ripple effect is is significant. And I think Bears talking about because they lost drives to the pressure. They lost points to the sacks. It's not just you took a sack on first down. Now you're behind the chains. Well, one, that's a, a bad place to be against the Chiefs. Like you might be able to convert the first down. They did that frequently against the Chiefs in that game. But against the Titans, it was sack out of field goal range, sack to make it a 54 yard, 52 yard field goal, whatever it was. And those things really hurt you. You, you know, the, the red zone trips that they've had in the playoffs that have ended in sacks or, or, or ended without success because of pressure. Can't really have that. So from, from that perspective, it needs to be different. The points that come off the board in these scenarios or in the scenario specifically against the Titans is what needs to be avoided. Like I said, if they, if, if Joe Burrow gets sacked four times, it's probably okay. Rather not see him lose his nameplate again. Although that was a pretty epic moment since they won. But if they lose that game and he lost his nameplate, that feels a whole lot different, I think. And, and it's a good point. He did get hit a lot against the Chiefs to the point when he couldn't finish the game. And so, yeah, I, I think that if they can get back to an adequate level on the offensive line and Joe Burrow doesn't let, you know, 60% of those pressures turn into sacks again, and he plays a little bit better in that regard. And I think he will. I really do. To, to your point, James, I, I don't think that he's going to have the same issues against the Chiefs defense that he had against the Titans defense. Then the Bengals can be in this game and, and keep it where they want to keep it. Because if, if you're settling for field goals in this game, it's just not going to get the job done. And it's why we're talking about a close knock him down, drag him out fight against the Titans instead of a Bengals blowout in that game. And to your point, James, you know, 19 points. There, there's no way that I see this game ending 19 to 16 in favor of the Bengals. No, no. They they got to score. They have to score often. And uh, and they got to get off to a, a good start. That's as, as important as anything um, in, in this game because of the crowd, because of how loud it's going to be. And we, we can talk into all of that. But to me, if they get off to a good start, then they can still mix in the run a little bit right and take a little pressure off of that offensive line and possess the ball a little bit and like and so that all ties together too and we talk about game script a ton but i do think that that matters a bit just because if you get down 14 nothing i mean that game in week 17 if chase doesn't just go since i'm using dragon ball z references apparently super saiyan and just go you know out of his mind and run away from everybody who knows how that game turns out and I expect those guys to play big, but it starts in the trenches. They're going to have to block. They're going to have to keep Burrow upright. And if they do that, then uh, you feel pretty good about what this offense, at least the potential that they have on offense. Yeah, same thing we've said every week. Be okay in protection and Joe Burrow, not every week, I guess, but definitely the last like 10 weeks. If you can <laughs> keep Joe Burrow upright, he's playing at such a high level that he's going to do enough. And, you know, credit the Bengals for getting down 14 against the chiefs last time and, and keeping the game in, in shooting distance and, and stopping the chiefs in the second half when they had to and playing a great ball control game. I agree, James, I think game script pretty big too. And then the other question for me is how do these defensive coordinators approach the game? I, I think that's a massive factor on both sides of the ball, not to, you know, you can get into turnovers and sacks and all this stuff. We'll talk about that a little bit. I think we've talked about it a lot, but how much does Steve Spagnolo blitz? How much does Luana Rumo blitz? And how do they time that up? I, I think that's a massive factor in this, in this game, and we should go there coming up next. But first, I have to tell you about Get Upside because going there, I'm going to Kansas City and for the game, of course. And while well, I'm driving, I decided to drive, and Get Upside is going to help save me money in my journey to KC because it's the incredible app that saves you money on gas every time you fill up and it's free. You can download it in the app store. You can download it in Google play. And when you do use promo code touchdown for 25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill up cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore when you could download get upside and use promo code touchdown for 25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank cash back you can take that money and deposit it into your bank account anytime you could get an amazon gift card you could buy jake let's go something special or 
you know, maybe just save it for a rainy day. Regardless, you need to get the Get Upside app right now and use promo code TOUCHDOWN to get up to 25 cents cash back off per gallon every time you fill up. Get Upsides for those of you driving out to Kansas City. Maybe you're going to get ready to drive out to L.A., Go across the country for a Super Bowl. If you are, maybe you also are interested in wagering on the Cincinnati Bengals. Or maybe you have some other sports bets in mind. If you do, Bet Online remains the number one spot for all of your sports wagering action in 2022. New year, new updated desktop and mobile website just for you over at betonline.ag. Simpler to use, easier to navigate than ever. You're going to get a 50% welcome bonus. On your first deposit when you use our promo code locked on when you get started. So maybe you really like Joe Burrow and the Bengals and this is their year. Well, if you want to put your money where your heart and where your mouth is, Bet Online has you covered. And like I said, if, if betting on your favorite team isn't your thing, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, all there as well. So don't wait to take advantage. Again, promo code locked on for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit at Bet Online, where the game starts. James, I think a pretty big factor to this game is how much these defensive coordinators blitz. I mean, we can talk about turnovers and capitalizing on takeaways. I think that that's a, a big deal, especially when you look back at the Bengals' last game against the Chiefs when they dropped their interception opportunities. And I think we talked about that in the crossover, but Joe Burrow this year has been so good against the blitz. And and when Steve Spagnuolo gives the Bengals opportunities to get these wide receivers in one-on-ones, Joe Burrow finding them and hitting them Mm -hmm. is going to be a big factor. Now, the other thing is, does Steve Spagnuolo trick Joe Burrow again? Because he got him once in that game. The Bengals later got him back for a touchdown on the Jamar Chase vertical when Dan Sorensen looked like he take took a bad angle. But earlier, you might remember a play where CJ Uzama got lit up on an incomplete pass to the right side of the field on a on a I don't know 15 yard out or so where where Spagnolo almost baited Joe Burrow into an interception. So I think there's a chess match there, but can Spags stay patient and not blitz in this game? They're, looking back the last, I don't know, five, six weeks, the only game he hasn't blitzed at least 20, was it 20 or 10? I can't remember. The lowest I've seen, though, was against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He only blitzed four times against that feeble offense. Now, a little bit more threat going on with the Bengals offense. So how, how patient can the Chiefs defensive coordinator stay? I think that's a big factor. Yeah, I get that. And, and I think the fun part to me is this Bengals offense, even if they do stay patient, and I get it, bro's better against the blitz and, and, and all of that. Like, they're okay, and they've shown, okay, well, we can play this way, and they could just move the ball downfield and take what's in front of them. But, yeah, if I'm if I'm the Chiefs, that's the last thing I want to do is, is blitz Burrow because, one, all of the weapons that you have to account for, that alone. The, the Bengals have better weapons than the Chiefs. I, I'm going to say it again because maybe people think it's a take. The Bengals have better weapons than the Chiefs do. They have the better running back. They have a wide receiver in Jamar Chase, who I think is playing better than Tyreek Hill right now. Sorry if that's crazy. And even if it's close, T. Higgins is much better than uh, the alternative in in who's second, what, Pringle? You're going to throw some Pringles at me? Like, he's good. He's fine. I'm not knocking him. Sorry, Byron Pringle. But T. Higgins is better, and Tyler Boyd, by the way, in the slot would be a game changer for the Chiefs. Uh, And I didn't even mention C.J. Uzama. Sorry, C.J. So they have better weapons. And so I I think they're comfortable in a variety of different ways. But if you're the Chiefs and you're blitzing, then if if you're the Bengals, Burrow's always going to be able to diagnose you want that because he'll be able to diagnose where it's coming from most of the time or bide enough time to find the right guy. Or it's just going to be a one-on-one to Jamar and he's going to be like, F it, (laughs) like he did in week 17. And, And so I do think that there's a happy medium there um for, you know for for the Bengals where maybe they have a you know a couple big plays with it but if the Chiefs don't blitz at all I I don't know I I, I would be surprised if they didn't blitz at all I, I would also be surprised if Chase didn't have some one-on-one opportunities and Higgins wouldn't have some one-on-one opportunities and that's the fun part that's the matchup that's why this matchup to me was more exciting is because these young guys 
have been on the field with the Chiefs after watching them when they were in college, right? When Super Bowls and MVPs, they've been on the same field and they beat them. So they're going to be confident going into this game. So I agree with you. If, if, if you're the Chiefs, don't blitz Burrow. But if they don't, at least early on, I think Burrow's patient enough and this offense has shown enough patience to be, to win the other way, which could then test his patience, like you said, and he might want to get after him a bit. Yeah, I think the same is also true when the Bengals are on defense because, yeah, you can talk about the Bengals' skill players. It doesn't really matter who has the better skill players to me. I mean, it, it helps that the Bengals have great skill players, but the Chiefs still have crazy speed on offense. Nicole Hardman's sure. a guy that we didn't talk about, and obviously Travis Kelsey from the University of Cincinnati. I can't believe he didn't spring to mind when you're going through the, the Chiefs' skill guys as a – you see alum, but well, well, they clearly have the edge there. Did you and, see how I phrased that? There, there was a reason I phrased it the way I phrased it. Well, and, and Jarek McKinnon too, right? So there's a lot of speed. I'm not saying oh, Jarek McKinnon is a great they're player. They're faster. He's just fast. They're faster than the Bengals. Right. That's no doubt. I'm not debating so, that. Sure. So, so what I'm getting at is the same idea. One, Patrick Mahomes just as good as Burrow against the Blitz, and, and Lou Anarumo I thought did a great job of being patient against Patrick Mahomes in Week 17 not blitzing very much. I think they blitzed six times in that game. We, we talked about it with Chris yesterday that got Patrick Mahomes on a zero look in the red zone to get off the field. And outside of that, Patrick Mahomes got that pretty good on the other five snaps. So same thing for Lou, uh, you know, pick your spots, hopefully guess right. <laughs> you know, when you, when you choose to dial up that pressure and, and, and just like the Titans game, when I think the Bengals did tackle really well, they had some issues downfield, but they tackled well in this game. You go back to the Chiefs in week 17, a lot of underneath stuff to their, their fast guys. And they're doing more of this with Jarek McKinnon, getting more opportunities in the receiving game. And, and uh, maybe a little bit with Clyde edwards helaire being back, although we haven't seen as much of this. When, when these guys, Tyree Kill, uh, Jarek McKinnon, get the ball underneath, the, the same sort of rally to the ball tackle, minimal yards after carry that the Bengals did in week 17 needs to be the case again because yeah. if Tyreek you, you see what he did against the Bills Tyreek makes one guy miss and 30 yards later you're hoping you have a guy with an angle there were guys ahead of him yeah and he threw up the peace sign yeah. to the guys ahead of him like you aren't catching me they're ahead of you bro but the Bills secondary is a little slower like I think the Bengals do have a faster you know uh secondary so that does matter, especially Cheeto. Don't tell Cheeto that he can't run with those dudes. He's going to be like, yeah, I can. Are you serious? And, and he did. In, in week no, 17, no he ran He ran Tyreek all the way to the sideline on a, on a fade. It was great. Yeah. No, he's certainly capable. And, and that's the thing. Like, again, this defense, they held him to three. And I they know the challenge, like, in the second half. They, they know the challenge. But I, I think they're pretty confident going into this. And that doesn't mean... Again, I've been talking about 40 points all week. It doesn't mean that they're going to slow him down a ton. But I do think that confidence matters, even if it's uh, almost unrealistic in a game like this, because it is just one game. It's not a best of seven series. So never know. I, I think to, to borrow from our pal Joe Goodberry in, in a response to one of the Schwartzes on Twitter today, the one that hasn't played recently, Jeff, uh, he, he said, we've seen it bleed. We, we know it's mortal. The Bengals have beaten this team. And, and to your point, James, I think that confidence is, is absolutely a factor in this game and, and might even go to their benefit. Are, are you saying, you know, you're, you're feeling like the Bengals defense pretty confident. 40 to 6? You, you like that one for the Bengals? <laughs> two two three-point halves or what? Oh, man. that uh, I mean, sign me up for that because, right? you know, be for, for, a, for a variety of reasons. Um, I have a feeling my prediction won't be that. But if so, if it is that, I'll tell you right now, if it is that, I will um, send out, if it's 40 to 6 Bengals, I will send out three boxes of Built Bars to random listeners. There you go. Great. There you How go. How about that? And we'll continue our keys to victory. But I have to tell you about Built Bars because Built Bars are the number one protein bar on the planet. They're high in protein. They're low in sugar. They're low in calories. They're perfect for you. So whether you're just trying to get in shape here in 2022, maybe you're hitting the gym and you need a protein punch after your workout, or maybe you're looking for just a healthier midday snack, Built Bars are here for you. Check them out right now at Built.com, and you're going to get 15% off your order. 
You're going to save money. You're going to get the best protein bar on the planet with promo code LOCKED15. These bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, and they taste great. So check out all of their flavors, and make sure you put in that order. Use promo code LOCK15 at Built.com for 15% off. Again, for 15% off, use promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. James, before we get to your prediction, before we get to Ryan's keys to victory for the Chiefs, I yep. feel like I've been saying my keys to victory. Let, let me hear one of yours that we haven't talked about yet just before we get to the Chiefs keys to victory and, and relax, react to them. Yeah, well, a couple things. Um, in the, the first one, totally agreed. It would have been my first one. It was my locked on now. You know, it's protect Burrow. But offensively, they need to, and it, it, early on, convert these uh, – these red zone opportunities, the touchdowns, they only have three red zone touchdowns in the playoffs right now. They're three for eight. I believe it is Evan McPherson goes on the Pat McAfee show talking about the postseason field goal record. Adam Vinatieri kick 13 field goals in the postseason. And I was thinking like, man, Evan, you're so confident. That's awesome. Also, if you get to that record or you're threatening that record, that means that it's not great for the Bengals, right? Unless they're 50 yarders on top of everything else. So maybe there's a path for it, but the point is, they have to score touchdowns. And uh, to me, the path to that, it's been the same thing all year. When you, you look back at the Vikings game, um, I, I think to, to the Bears game week two, both Steelers games, I believe it was both, certainly the first one, Jamar Chase. I need Jamar Chase to go off in this game. It's just weird. Like, I, and, and I get it. The Chiefs are going to change things some, but he's seen doubles and he's seen cloud coverage and he's seen this and that and so if there's like one key outside of Burrow playing great, and I think T Higgins is in line for a big week and all of these things, I need Jamar Chase to do what I said last segment, which is be the best wide receiver on the field. I just said he was better than Tyreek Hill. Like, think about that. And it's a debate. I get it. It's a debate. I understand. But the fact that I can even say that with a straight face, like, holy. And he, he was the best receiver on the field in week 17, and I'm going to need him to be the best receiver on the field on Sunday. Man, if he runs back 266, how about that? Let's talk about fun things that could happen in this game. Let's just go fun. put up two bills again. That, that'd be kind of fun. Oh, that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. And so, like, I get it. I can name, because, of course, we could do the turnover thing or Bates this or that. You know, there, there's so many ways I could go. But, man, Jamar Chase yeah. hides a, t a hell of a lot of stuff can go wrong. And suddenly it's like, oh my God, there's, there's number one. There he is. Yeah. Him and his gritty dance. <laughs> yeah, and, and you'd think the chiefs would have some sort of plan that prioritizes Jamar chase after what he did to them the first time, know. but I'm not convinced they will. I'm not either Gabriel Davis. And then apparently they didn't do much to Stefan Diggs. Yeah. I mean, they'll have to do something different just because I think that they've seen very recently Jamar Chase have more receiving yards than their quarterback had passing yards. So, you know, if there's ever a motivation to adjust what you're doing on defense, there it is. I'll just talk about, I don't know, two other matchups that, that could be pretty big in this game real quick when the Bengals defense is on the field. Cause I think, you know, T Higgins, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon getting involved, get, getting the clutch plays, CJ Uzama on, on third downs and all this stuff as a check down. I think we we know pretty well what the Bengals offense is going to be in this game. But a, a couple for me, Cheeto bounce back week played really well against Tyreek Hill. The first time around, they were shadowing him a little bit, not every, every snap, but I, I talked about it. He followed him into the slot on a slot fade. And so Cheeto versus the, the speed and, and downfield ability from these chiefs receivers is definitely one. It looks like you have something to say about that. Yeah, real quick. Cheeto was asked about the Tennessee game on Thursday. And he was like, we're off of Tennessee, bro. I'm on to Kansas City. There you go. Take <laughs> so, a page and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but the dude is is like focused. So I, I would expect him to have a bounce back game. Go ahead. And, and so would I. Like Cheeto's been way more good than bad. Like the, the Tennessee game, massive anomaly for Shadobe Awuzie's season so far that I think that he has an argument with Trey Hendrickson for the best defensive signing on the Bengals this year. And the other one is Trey Hendrickson, Orlando Brown, not going to be Joe Tooney at left tackle barring injury this time. Orlando Brown has issues with speed. 
Trey Hendrickson can get around him, I think. And and then can this defensive line contain Mahomes better than the Bills did? You know, find that turnover creating pressure that that he's been so good at this year. Th- these are X factors, right? Finding those those turnovers, finding where they could be. No doubt. You know, and and I think Trey Hendrickson, if there's ever a time to run around a guy from a matchup perspective and Trey wins outside, that's where he wins. I think that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. No, I I, I totally agree. They're going to have to win the turnover battle, right? It, they've done it, and they've consistently done it week in yeah. and week out for the past six weeks. They have to do it. Trey Hendrickson has two strip sacks this this uh, playoff in the playoffs already in two games. Might as well make it three. Absolutely. I don't think Ryan talked about that, but let's hear from Ryan from Locked On Chiefs real quick and get his ideas as to what the keys to the Chiefs Winning this game, our we'll AFC Championship game comes down to two things for the Kansas City Chiefs. Can Patrick the Reaper Mahomes continue his run as we saw against the Bills? And can the Chiefs defense and its staff learn its lesson from the last time they played the Cincinnati Bengals? I'm Ryan Tracy from Locked On Chiefs, and that's what it comes down to. You saw an extraordinary effort by the offense, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, to not only get to overtime, but then win it. They don't need to do that. They have to avoid it, in fact, in order to get this win against a team that is nearly as explosive. On the other side, you have to be careful if you're Steve Spagnuolo or anyone out there on the field on the defensive side of the ball to not overreact to what you saw the last time when Jamar Chase destroyed that secondary on a circus catch after circus catch. Tyron Matthews should be back and playing in this ballgame. That helps. You have to adjust and you have to play over the top and you have to try to take Chase and limit him. Not take him away because then you're devoting too many other resources to that and someone else is going to hurt you. I think they're going to play more zone. I think they have to back off and let Joe Mixon hurt them if he can. They'll live with that and that will get them the win. Well, it's good to see It's good to see that uh, the Jamar Chase topic. You know, I, I make the key, yeah, Jamar Chase is going to have to play big. Well, uh, clearly, Ryan Tracy wants to take him away. So we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. And and we talked about the Chiefs not getting over aggressive. I feel like he's saying, let try to try to make Joe Mixon beat you. Similar for both defenses in this game. Don't blitz. Try to keep the ball in front of you. Dare the run game to beat you. Neither team wants to deal with the passing prowess of Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow. So yeah, I think that he he's probably on to something there. I We'll be very interested to see how that would pan out because I think the Bengals did a better job and we'll see how Patrick Mahomes adapts. I think they did a great job in week 17 when they didn't blitz of, of kind of containing the chiefs passing offense of keeping the ball in front of them and tackling. Like I said, w- when they tried to check it down and let Tyree create after the catch, mm-hmm. they, they got beat obviously in the first half, made some good second half adjustments. And so for both teams, a lot of tape to adjust to, from week 17 and looking at how they've played in the playoffs. And well, we'll have to see how it plays out. And speaking of how it's going to play out, James final non Super Bowl prediction. Here we go. Of the year. What do you got? <sighs> All right. I'm going to look right into the camera here. Like I'm one of these people that looks right into the camera and is really dramatic about it with his prediction here. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Or, or talk right into the microphone for all of our audio listeners. How about that one? Um, look, this game, there's a lot of people that are going to say it's house money, right? And, you know, if, if the if it, the Bengals lose, no one expected them to get here and all of that stuff. And I get it. I understand it. But they expect to win. And that's the difference. We're not used to this. We're not used to uh, guys like Joe Burrow who think they're better than Patrick Mahomes that don't just hope to be around that level. Joe Burrow thinks he's better than Patrick Mahomes. Jamar Chase thinks he's better than Tyreek Hill and more explosive than Travis Kelsey. And Joe Mixon knows he's the best running back in this game. And, you know, I could keep going on and on. T. Higgins thinks he's better than all of them, right? Tyler Boyd thinks he's underutilized and better than all of them. So these guys, they go into the game with that mindset. And so when I look at it from that perspective, a young team, super talented on on offense, and that's where it's going to come from. Veterans on defense that have been in big games. And by the way, Again, they won on January 2nd. That part matters a ton. And yeah, did it maybe get the Chiefs' attention? Will the Chiefs not take them you know, less serious or, or sleep on them? It's the AFC title game. I don't think anybody's sleeping on anybody when you get to this, uh, you know, to this point. Um, and so 
I think that benefits the Bengals the most because they have confidence that they can go toe to toe with that team. Who cares if it's at Arrowhead? I get there's factors involved there. I understand it. But I think that this team, they are built to beat the Chiefs. I really do. I think that they can do it because of a Trey Hendrickson strip sack, because of Chido Beowuzier and his speed or Jesse Bates roaming the backfield. Uh, the, the fact that this offense has a, a quarterback that can diagnose the way Burrow can and has played big in every damn big game he's been in. He went into Tuscaloosa and said, Nick Saban on the man after getting shut out the year prior. Uh, what he did against the Raiders, what he did last week, despite not even reading his, his superpower was gone. His spider sense was gone essentially. And the dude threw up 350 yards. He's going to play well on Sunday. And so I've gone back and forth all week about this game. Who am I going to pick? Because I pick who I think is going to win. I don't pick, you know, just to, to make locked on Bengals listeners happy or, or chiefs fans happy that happen to be watching. No, I picked depending on who I think is going to win. And I've gone back and forth and I think I know. These Bengals are different. They're different, Jake. So I'm going to take the Cincinnati Bengals. 41. They get to the mark. I said 40 all week. They're going to get to it. 41. A couple money, Mac. Uh, Shooter, McPherson, whatever the hell you want to call him. Rookie of the year. Kicker. Field goals. Five touchdowns. 41 points at Arrowhead. And... The Chiefs, well, they get to 38. They don't get to my 40 point threshold because those veteran def- that veteran defense does just enough. They still give up 38, but it's not enough. The Bengals shock the football world. And that's exactly what they would do if they won. They shock the football world and they're headed to Super Bowl 56 at SoFi Stadium. I'm down. Sign me up. Let's go. Let's head on out to LA, James. Let's have ourselves okay. a week. Uh, a couple of things stand out to me in your prediction there. One of them, Joe Burrow the second time around versus Andy Reid the second time around. Both of these guys have a great track record in their sec- in rematches. Andy Reid in revenge games. I know this has been a talking point for Chiefs fans. Joe Burrow the second time around. And Joe Burrow in general, man. How many times have we said, doubt Joe Burrow at your own peril? Yep. Just like I said all year, believe in the Titans at your own peril. Look where the Titans are and look where Joe Burrow is. Uh, the, the other thing about Burrow that I really like that you brought up there, James is in, in, in winter go home games, Joe Burrow is, is what eight and no going back to his, his senior year of college or is his he, last year at LSU. Yeah. 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 If you do that. So I, I thought you were going to go back to high school. He lost, he, he was crazy in the state title game for right. Athens and they lost by like two, but yeah, eight yeah. and no dating back to that. You're right. So, so you, you take the, the games at LSU, when he developed, when he was starting again, got that killer instinct, had that transformation, his second, his, his first year at LSU, his second to last year of college, and then never lost again in college, Mm -hmm. including showing up biggest on the biggest stages against Alabama, against Clemson. Well, here's another big stage for Joe Burrow. And seems like in these situations, he has that clutch gene we talked about. And uh, that's something that as a Bengals fan, you got to feel pretty good about. Yeah, you, you do. And that, that's the reason. It, 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 honestly, it comes down to Joe Burrow. Do I think he's going to blink? And I don't. And I don't think Patrick Mahomes is necessarily going to blink. But I, I think this dude, these dudes are different. Jamar is different. Evan McPherson is different. Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd. Like, this is their shot. And by the way, I didn't add it. I'm looking at you, Zach. Let's go, Zach. I'm going to need – there's going to be a moment in this game where you're going to have to call. Maybe it's a trick play. Maybe it's a unique thing. Whatever it is, whatever that thing is that you need to call, that you need to rely on on fourth down, or maybe you have to go for two or whatever it is, call it. Don't shy away. Don't send Kevin out there unless it's the fake punt. Get it done. And I'm not saying go for it every time either, but there's going to be a moment where they have to make a, a call. Maybe it's on third down. And make that call, make the right call. There's, there's got to be some trickery, right? No, no stone unturned, Jake. Got to find a way. I'm down. Like I said, I'm down. I'm down for all of it. Let's go to L.A. along with the city of Cincinnati that I know will show up 
to support their Cincinnati Bengals. We'll be back after the game, folks. Sunday, noon my time, 3 Eastern time. Bengals, Chiefs for the Super Bowl. 41-38. There you go. Until then, Bengals fans, hootay, and have a good one.